person do the miraculous, do the set the captive free, save the soul today. Let your mighty power rest right there upon us today. Holy Spirit, and we love this video. Let your people be blessed. In the name, I lift myself unto you. Lord. Let me not speak any other word. Let me live upon the throne of grace. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning once again. Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Jesus, our good Lord, Kampala. This is a live broadcast from our studio in Uganda. We welcome you. My name is Pastor Bade Abraham. I thank God for your life for watching online this particular service. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. My God and my Savior, I want to thank you for this another opportunity to gather in your presence. Lord, we ask the Lord, let the power of the Most High God, let it embrace this platform, let it upload this video, and let your re release your presence, you release your healing power, release your deliverance power into everyone that is watching this broadcast live in the name of Jesus. Father, use me as your battle. Let me decrease and let Christ increase in me. And let your name be known be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We are here this day today. Good morning once again. Welcome to the second service of our healing and deliverance service. Our eighth or seventh healing and deliverance service. And the theme, the title for today's this second service is titled Deliverance from Demonic Oppression, the Demonic Aggression Against Your Destiny. Deliverance from demonic aggression against your destiny. Deliverance from demonic aggression against your destiny. There is a divine plan for God for your life. That one is called destiny. There is a divine plan of God for your life. That one is called this destiny. So let's open our Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 1 to 9. 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 1 to 9. 1 Samuel chapter 17, 1 to 9. Now Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. And they were gathered together at Sholom, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Sholom and Asaka in the Ephesus. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah. And said the battle to narrate again the Philistine. Verse 3. And the Philistine stood on the mountain on the one side, and he said, stood on the mountain on another side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out of champion out of the camp of Philistine, named Goliath of God, whose eye was six feet and his palm. Verse 5. And he had a bed of brass upon his head, he was out with a coat of mail. And weight of gold was 5,000 shekels of brass. Verse 6. And he had grief of brass upon his leg, and a target of brass between his shoulder. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear head weighs his own dead shekels of iron. And one bear a shekel went before him. And he stood and cried unto the army of Israel, and said unto them, Why you come to set your battle in Ari? Am I? Not a Philistine, and you servant of Saul, choose you a man for you. Let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servant. Our servant. Now, at the, in the second third Sunday of this month, we had a anointing service titled Coil of Greatness. Oil of greatness. David was a shepherd boy. I'm not giving this an introduction. David was a shepherd boy. He was the eighth child of the family. He was an abandoned child. He was a forsaken child. He was a child that is to do is the last one of the family. Most often the last one family is supposed to be enjoying the best. But in his own case, as the last one of the family, he was given all worth of job to do. He was not papa, he was not taken care of, but he was doing the worst of job to do. Unlike Joseph, who was the level child, what is doing his father, he doesn't go to feed. But in case of David, he was maltreated by his brothers, his seven brothers, he was. But God had mercy on him, and one day the whole of David come upon him. He was anointed from being a shepherd boy to be the next king.
king of Israel. And immediately he moved from being a shepherd boy, he moved to the palace. Because immediately he was anointed, the spirit of God came heavily upon him. And, and as he came heavily upon him, he, he, he was advertised. At the same time, the Hebrew spirit, the spirit was tormenting the king, so. And each time the king saw had a problem. So he said, the only boy that can pray for you, music for you to be well, is David. So David was set, was already set up. His divine plan of God for his life was to be the next king of Israel. And he was already on the path, being mentored. He was already, by being the armor bearer of the reigning king, King Saul. So he moved to the king Saul of palace. He was the armor bearer in train or to the next king. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, there was this Goliath. There was this problem that came in suddenly to threaten the David destiny of becoming the next king of Israel. And this Goliath, he said, that all of a sudden, there was this Goliath that came in suddenly. He had been anointed as a king. He had left the bush, the shepherd, and the shepherd had been in from being the shepherd, the field, he is now in the king's palace, and Abu Biara being tutor, being tutoring, being trained to be the next king. All of a sudden, there was this Goliath, there was this stubborn problem, this coronavirus that stand between him and stand between and is being the king. And the man called Goliath, he said in that verse 9 we read, he said, You people don't bother to fight me. No one of you don't come to fight me. Just put one man that will fight me. If I defeat that one man, all of you will be my servant. If you defeat, if, if that man defeat me, will be your servant. What is the implication of this? Somebody not be anointed as a king. Is in the process, is being too tough to be the next king. He has already moved to the palace from the from field. All of a sudden, problem arose. What is the problem? Goliath. That want that threatened the whole nation. I don't know who is on the side of my voice today. You are supposed to have resumed work. A new job this month. Coronavirus came suddenly. It's not going to stop your destiny. It's not going to stop your destiny. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Jesus. Coronavirus came as a Goliath. But it cannot stop your destiny. If the Goliath cannot stop David from being the king, Coronavirus will not stop you from fulfilling destiny. In the name of Jesus. Very quickly. What do we mean by deliverance? What do, what do we mean by destiny? What do we mean by demonic aggression? Very quickly. And we talk about, remember the title is Deliverance from Demonic Aggression Against Your Destiny. Deliverance from Demonic Aggression Against Your Destiny. Now, what is deliverance? Very simple. Deliverance is something set free from stubborn hindrances, from stubborn, from obstacles, that try to hinder your spiritual, your career, and business growth. Deliverance is to be set free from that stubborn situation, from that stubborn circumstance, from that stubborn personality who stand between you and your spiritual upliftment, who stand between you and your career upliftment, who stand between you and your business expansion. In, the, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, it was a cause that stand between Jabez and his business expansion. It was a cause the mother he raised on him when he gave back to him that stand between Jabez and his next his business expansion. For David, it was a stubborn Goliath that wanted to kill him. He wanted to stop. It's a stubborn Goliath that arose from nowhere. Shortly after he became a king, a, a mother as a king, it was Goliath that came in to truncate his training program as the next king of the land. So, when, so I want to tell you today, I don't know who you are. Every stubborn hindrances, every corona, because listen to me, coronavirus, COVID-19 is a stubborn hindrances. So many people business expansion. COVID-19 is a stubborn hindrances to somebody's career expansion. So I prophesy, I speak to you today in the name of this Lord. Every demonic aggression to the fulfillment of your destiny, the Lord will deliver you from it in Jesus' name. The Lord will set you from it in Jesus' name. Listen to me. Many people, business, who are supposed to grow to the next level, or to be, to do a person to expand it to the next, to other countries, cannot do that. Because why? Borders are closed. All country borders are closed. So even you 
have the cash, you have the money, they help you to set up company in Kenya, they help you to set up company in Rwanda, everything has been set up, you are supposed to move in, the office has been rented, you are even paying for the rent of the office, all you just the workers have been recruited, you just need to go and execute the project. But you cannot do it because of coronavirus. I promise you, every coronavirus that wants to stand between you and your fulfillment of destiny, they shall be, you shall be delivered from me in the name of Jesus. Many people got letter of appointment to resume in April. They don't know whether they are going to resume or not. Some of them have resumed work, a new job. Nobody can resume an international job outside East Africa now. Nobody. If you are given an final appointment to resume, you are a US citizen, you are coming to Uganda, it's not possible. You are in Uganda, you are going, going to Australia to resume national employment. It's not possible. Why? Because borders are closed. So coronavirus came in to stand as a demonic aggression. And the Lord God of Israel will destroy that demonic aggression. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He stands as an obstacle. He stands as an impediment. Amen. But God will deliver from me in Jesus. Amen. God will deliver from me in Jesus. Amen. The next thing, brethren, is that what is destiny? Brethren, destiny is the divine plan of God for a man. Amen. Destiny simply means divine plan of God for a man. Destiny simply means divine plan of God for a man. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 9, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 9, the Bible says, Before he formed Jeremiah and in his mother, he has, for, he has ordained him as a prophet to nations. Yes. That was the divine plan of God for Jeremiah. That before he was formed in his mother, before the mother even came to the parent thing, come together at all. He is ordained a prophet. Before the mother of Jeremiah came together to have his God as ordained prophet to nations. That we call divine plan. There is a plan of God for your life. There is a plan of God for your life. Coronavirus will not stop it in Jesus' name. Coronavirus will not stop it in Jesus' name. I say coronavirus will not stop it. Amen. I say coronavirus will not stop it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That's what they call divine plan. That's a divine plan. Remember also the word of God says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, I know the thought that I think to all you, they are thought of peace, not of evil, but you are expected end. I know the thought that I think to all you, they are thought of peace, not of evil, but you are expected end. So what are we talking about? God's plan for us as individual is a good plan. It's not an evil plan of destruction. So therefore, every aggression from the covenant of earth to terminate the man on timely before the coming of the is in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what is demonic aggression? That's all right. Remember, the time is delivered from demonic aggression against your destiny. Amen. Amen. Now, remember, it's not just aggression. I said demonic aggression. Now, what is aggression? Aggression simply means hostility, anger, antagonism, opposition. Now, when we not talk about demonic aggression, we are talking about forces from the kingdom of darkness, forces from the kingdom of darkness. Principality and power, wickedness, whatever in high places, opposing progress, opposing movement. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we talk about we raise them against the flesh and blood, against the principality and power, the ruler of that and the spiritual world in high places. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, he said, we raise them against the flesh and blood, but they gain the principality, power, and the ruler of that and the spiritual world in high places. My question to you, my said, Pastor, this one you are talking about, we don't understand. You see, you know, we have so far version we are hearing that um, coronavirus is a violent weapon being prepared by Chinese or whatever. Listen, brethren, whether it is a violent weapon or it's not a violent weapon. The reason why it is happening right now is because God has allowed it. Somebody can prepare coronavirus and it will not work. It's because God has allowed it. Some people have tried to create human beings, but it has failed because God has not allowed it. So, Coronavirus is acting now because God has allowed it. And, well, so it's a demonic aggression. So, de so coronavirus is a demonic aggression against people that is a forces of hell. It's a power of darkness. It's a principality. And the, what coronavirus came to do now at this point is to oppose people's progress. Even though some people are being punished for their sins by the of coronavirus. But the majority of people are that are facing coronavirus challenges now is opposing their breakthrough, is standing between them and their breakthrough, is standing between them and their blessing, 
He started the owner of is standing, is an obstacle to their breakthrough, is an obstacle to their problem, is a total obstacle to their moving forward. So I declare in the name of Jesus, any demonic aggression from the covers of air to ensure that you don't fulfill destiny, it is destroyed by the power of the blood of Jesus. It is cast by the power of the blood of Jesus. Why demonic aggression? Devil is of the darkness. Children of God, we are of the light. And whenever light and darkness, light and darkness are not seen together, light always overshine darkness. The reason why there is a demonic aggression is because darkness does not want light. John chapter 1 verse 5 said, light shining dark and darkness cannot comprehend it. Darkness does not want light. In Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Corinthians chapter four, Second Corinthians chapter sixteen, chapter Corinthians chapter, chapter six, Second Corinthians chapter six, verse forty to eighteen, Second Corinthians chapter six, verse forty to eighteen, Second Corinthians chapter six, verse forty to eighteen. He said, "Be not your equally yoke together with unbeliever, for what we shall righteousness with unrighteousness, what communion as light with darkness? We are light. Corona virus is darkness." Therefore, the light of God will shine over Canada. Mm -hmm. It will set the world free. Mm -hmm. It will set the nation free. In the name of Jesus. So, Corona is darkness. Mm -hmm. It came to eradicate light. And it is not possible because God is light. So, every child of light at this time and at this season, what is happening right now is because Corona virus has come in as an obstacle. It's a demonic aggression. And why we say demonic aggression? Many people. There are so many plans that have been altered mm. by this coronavirus. There are so many conferences that have been stopped. So people's glory is supposed to come for this next month in, in Japan Olympic. They've been cancelled. Some people are supposed to take gold medal in Japan Olympic next month. It's been cancelled for another one year. Who can say another one year? Maybe they might not be around to attend Olympic. It will maybe they be around and they might not win gold again. Mm. That's what coronavirus came to do. Coronavirus has come to Japan has never hosted Corona has never hosted Olympic before. They postponed it. And who can say whether it will go in Japan or not in Japan? That's what coronavirus came to do. Some people, businesses, will have prospered through the Olympic that is only in Japan. Now with coronavirus, the business might be dead, is dead, and may not be dead. So, coronavirus is a demonic aggression against people's destiny, against the people of life, to fulfill their destiny, to prosper, to expand. But as God liveth, God will destroy the work of darkness in Jesus' name. Yeah. Coronavirus shall be silenced forever in Jesus' name. So, it's a demonic aggression. It's the forces of hell to make sure people don't prosper. It's the forces of hell to make sure nation close down, which is what is happening. Nation shut down. Is a demonic aggression against humanity to make sure no food, no, no, no borders are closed, no inflow of businesses, only in them, to make sure that everything is paralyzed. It's a demonic aggression for the common of it. And the beginning of that might be because of just one person. This thing that is going around the world might be because of just one person, a child of light, who is going to be a child of the kingdom of darkness. And that's what must say that God will deliver this nation. Will deliver the work of coronavirus in Jesus. Very quickly, what who are told divine for you what is destiny and divine for you what is deliverance and has divine to you what is demonic aggression. And I said demonic aggression is demonic force from the kingdom of darkness, the principality and power, the Christian kingdom, the children of the high and the objective is to oppose, is to stop, is to delay the fulfillment of divine plans of people. The objective of this demonic force of demonic force of coronavirus is to delay, to deny, to stop the fulfillment of the divine plan of God for children of life. And that's why we must not take this thing lightly. The coronavirus came in to delay, to deny, to stop the divine plan of God on people, children of God's life from being fulfilled. So you must, when it's time to cry to pray and shock it, we must cry in prayer. Because it's not for that. So what are the few things you must know about deliverance? God is a great deliverer. Amen. God is a great deliverer. Amen. And he's a deliverer. Amen. God is a deliverer. And he's a great deliverer. Amen. God is a deliverer.
deliverer and the great deliverer. And the deliverer is someone who set another person free. God is the only one that can set us free in this quagmire. God is the only one that can set us free in this pandemic of COVID 19. And in Psalm 1 is 18, verse 2. Psalm 18, verse 2. He said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom will I trust, my shield and, and him of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, is my fortress, is my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom will I trust. My sheep and him of my salvation, my strong name. Psalm 14, verse 17. Psalm 14, verse 17. He said, You are my head. God is my head. Can is my deliverer? God is our head. He is our deliverer. Psalm, second Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. He said, And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. God is your, our deliverer. Brethren, if president of the nations of the world, is the deliverer of COVID 19. The world will have been delivered easily. Yeah. The world will have been delivered easily. If President Trump, Trump is the deliverer, is the one that can deliver us from this COVID 19. He will have delivered America from COVID 19. Yeah. But then people will realize it. Now, if Chinese, the China themselves, who, who they say they could prepare this, uh, they, if they are the ones that have solution to this COVID 19, it will have been solved. The World Health Organization, if they have solution, it will have been solved. That means they are not a deliverer. Yes. God is a deliverer. And the word of God says in Mark 3 22. Mark 3 22. He said, Who can go to the house of the strong man? <laughs> and and not first of all, this was a strong man. Who is that one? Sorry, who is that one? Sorry, Luke 3 22. Sorry. Who is that man that can go to, to the house of the strong man? We well, first of all not break the strong man. Defeat the strong man. So the question is. Who is the strong man? COVID-19 is the strong man. And the only one that can deliver from COVID-19 is the Lord Almighty. Amen. Amen. He is the Lord Almighty. He is the God Almighty. He is the great deliverer. So that's what I want you to know this afternoon, this morning, that our great deliverer is God Almighty. Our great deliverer is God Almighty. He is our great deliverer is God Almighty. He's not a man. He's not a woman. He's God Almighty. So we must know that point. God is a great deliverer. God is a great deliverer. God is a great deliverer. Number two, deliverance is first needed by those who are not yet saved. The fourth deliverer anybody needs today is to be saved. Because you, you, are, you can it take God to deliver a man from the power of sin. Many of us have been under the yoke of sin before. But in the power of God that delivers us, that set us free. No man pray for us. But the Holy Spirit will rest upon us and set us from sin. So this morning you are under the sound of my voice. And you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. I want to say this. I want to say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I, 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 I'm a sinner. I confess my sin to you. I, I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. I, I boldly declare I am saved and born again. I am washed by the blood of the Lamb. I am free from sin in Jesus' name. If you pray this simple prayer that is a number on our screen, please call number, that number for further consultation and counseling. So, the deliverer is made for everyone that is living on that sin. You don't live sin because you want to live sin. It's the only power of God that can set the man from sin. That's number two. You must know. Deliverance is what is there by those who are yet to be saved. And God has saved some people this morning and you are praying in Jesus' name. Now, why do I say that? Without deliverance from sin is an illegal authority for the COVID-19 to keep on tormenting and killing people. Without deliverance from sin, you say authority is a legal authority for the devil and the agent of that thing to be using to be killing more people. Without deliverance from the power of sin of our nations, or without being confessed and sin as nations all over the world, say, God, oh, we are sorry, we have come against you. The Death being caused by COVID 19 cannot stop. Until we all re repent of our sins as individuals, as a nation. That is where, because the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, said, The weapon of warfare are not carnal, but mighty God will pull down the stronghold. The weapon 
not they are not canon. Why do people just support? Isaiah 49 verse 24 and 6. He said, Isaiah 49 verse 24 and 26. He talks about lawful captive and unlawful captive. A lawful captive is that person who willingly, deliberately sin. And because of that sin, he becomes a, a, a captive. And until that captive is set free from the power of sin, is the next level of deliverance, which is deliverance from the powers of darkness, cannot be possible. Mm. Number three, deliverance becomes easier when the person that needed deliverance is ready to be set free. It's not every time people are ready for deliverance. What is going on this, in this world now? Let's continue. But, brethren, the four deliverance we need is to repent of our sins. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. If people that come and people shall humble themselves, forsake, forsake their way, and will come from heaven and heal their life. If we don't repent of our national sins, if we don't repent of our global sin, how can there be God cannot hear us? And that's the message we've been preaching. Let there be national repentance of sin, let there be global repentance of sin, so that God can hear us. So the moment somebody is not ready for repentance of sin, national, international, and global sin, there cannot be delivered. So how do we obtain, very quickly, in the next few minutes, how did David obtain deliverance? Now, how did, in those stories we read, how did David obtain deliverance from demonic aggression against his destiny? David, you know, nobody was ready to fight. David became a king. And how does David obtain deliverance from demonic aggression against his destiny? How does David obtain deliverance from demonic aggression against his destiny? Now, if you read first Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. First Samuel chapter 32, step by step. Read first Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. Point number one. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. The point number one that David confronted the Goliath. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 2. The Bible says, David said to Saul, Let no other fail because of him, coronavirus. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. David confronted Goliath. Brethren, the nation of the world are confronting COVID 19 in a very medical way. But let's add spiritual way to it. Let there be people gather all over the nations. Let people, some people gather somewhere in the nation of the world, in all country, and be praying for mercy of God against this sin that brought it. We are doing well on medicals. But let go to God and ask for mercy on the way we have seen internationally and nationally. So David confronted the Goliath. He confronted the double situation. How? Not just physically, but spiritually. We are doing well physically, but spiritually, I'm not sure we are doing well as a nation of the world. That's David to number two. Number two, we are David confronted Goliath. He confronted physically, the whole world is confronted, confronted physically now. But David did not stop at physical confrontation of Goliath. And we should not stop at physical confrontation of COVID 19. Number two thing David did is that he defeated Goliath by recounting his testimony of how God has helped him to defeat an enemy more than Goliath. He gave testimony of the glory of God, so that means David is a child of God. In verse in 4 Samuel chapter 17, verse 7, chapter 34 to 36, verse 7, chapter 7, verse 34 to 36, David was sharing his testimony how he was at his father's field. And there came a lion and a bear, and they took a lamb from the top. And David said, He went after him. He was at the He said, I went after him and smote him and delivered out of the mouth. When he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. What is the testimony of? Which testimony and war gave him about God's faithfulness in our nations? What are we saying? How God has kept us in the time past? We give a testimony of goodness of God, how we have given up from various standards to get the disease before now. That's what they will do. That's what we need to do now. Number three. Number three. David obtained deliverance from war. He obtained deliverance in the name of the Lord. That is what I'm saying now. We David started by confronting the Lord. 
fighting Goliath physically. But he did it in prayer. He did not go to Goliath in his might, in his power. He went to meet Goliath in the word of God, in the name of the Lord. In first Samuel 17, verse 7. David said, over the Lord that delivered me out of the power of lion, and the poor out of the power of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of Philistine. The Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. As I said, the whole world is doing very well in physical confrontation. I'm not sure we are doing very well in spiritual confrontation. The whole world is doing, doing very well in physical confrontation. I'm not sure we are doing well in spiritual confrontation. And very quickly, so our we need to combine physical confrontation with spiritual confrontation in prayer. And I believe as we all do that to give our destiny against for well, our destiny, we shall be delivered in Jesus' name. Brethren, I want us to pray. The next time we'll be talking about the five push moves to David use. We want to pray. Let us rise this way. We are going to cry to God. Jesus, may we pray. Amen. In Isaiah 43, verse 19, 
He said, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. You will not know it. I will make a way in the wilderness and live in the desert. This is where we have is like in the wilderness. Say, Father, make a way for my breakthrough in this coronavirus circumstances a situation. Father, make a way for the breakthrough of your people. A financial breakthrough, marital breakthrough, ministerial breakthrough, career breakthrough. Make a way for their breakthrough in this coronavirus. Make a way for their breakthrough. You say in your world, you will make a way in the male wilderness. All those who are, who are paid faithful, faithful in the payment of their time and their offering in this coronavirus, make a way for them. Make a way for their financial breakthrough. Make a way for their career. In the name of the Lord. Zebra, Kuta, Sata, Kuta, Saga, Ida, Dika, Saga, Make a way for their bed. In Jesus' name we pray. He said, We do a new thing. Father, do a new thing. In this new growth form, concerning my destiny, concerning my destiny, do a new thing. Say, Father, you said you do a new thing. In this coronavirus situation, in this wilderness situation, in this lockdown situation, do a new thing, Lord. Do a new thing. Do a new thing, Lord. Do a new thing. A new thing that the eyes will see. Do a new thing in our businesses. A new thing in our career. A new thing in our ministry. A new thing of glory. A new thing of signs and wonder. A new thing of testimony. A new thing of English. A new thing of favor. A new thing of favor. A new thing of power. Paria to Sakuta and Dayaka. Shayla Kataka. Favor them in their career. Favor them in Jesus' name we pray. Brother, I know we just two more prayer points and we close. Yes. But let me tell you something. I had an encounter in 2009. That was shortly before after the global meltdown. And God told me to do certain things. It was asked to be given seeds at that time. Because the whole world was in financial shambles. And God told me something. He said, this is a, this seed, this faithfulness of tithe and offering in that season will go into a new level. And I will beg, I want to beg you, <laughs> if you want preservation of your businesses, of your finances, of your career, make sure at this season you don't default in your tithe and offering. Make sure you don't default in your tithe and offering. So I'd like you to cry to God. Say, Father, Father, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in this season, I receive grace. I receive grace of God to be able to be faithful in my financial obligation to God. Father, help me at this season to remain faithful to you in my financial obligation to you. Oh, Father, I, I so that you can so that my business will be preserved, my finances will be preserved, my career will be preserved. In the name of Jesus, live a rakoto in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One last prayer point, brethren. I don't want to be telling you the news, do news now. But I'm talking to you right now, as I yesterday, one of the superpower of the nation, 3.2 million people have employed and applied for employment benefit because they don't have jobs. 3.2 million people have applied for employment benefit because they don't have jobs. Now, as I'm talking to you, because you don't, they are already job loss in superpower nations, in the G7 nations. They are already job loss. And in the Africa, there will be job loss after coronavirus has ended or subsided. So I want to pray to God. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, coronavirus will not lead to loss of job for me. You will preserve me and preserve my career. Father, in the name of Jesus, you will not be to preserve your business. Christ will say, Father, after the end of coronavirus, it will preserve my career, it will preserve my business, it will preserve my ministry. When I say, I say, that's a casting down. For me, that shall be a lifting up. When I say, that's a casting down. For me, that shall be a lifting up. Father, in the name of Jesus, coronavirus will not lift our loss. We shall have gain. There shall be no loss for all. It shall be gain for us with a faithful type prayer and only prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we just want to thank you, we want to bless your name. Thank you because you are the great deliverer. And you, the way you deliver 
David, for the hand of God and beer and, and, and life. Father, deliver us as individuals, as nation, from every catastrophe and disaster and aftermath of coronavirus in Jesus' name. Amen. That will preserve our businesses, preserve our homes, preserve our marriages, preserve our career, preserve our vocation in the name of Jesus. Father, every demonic aggression against our destiny. Cast fire in the name of Jesus. Every demonic aggression to against our fulfillment of destiny. Cast fire in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Because when men are saying that they cast in them, all that shall be is lifting up. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Brethren, it's time to give our tithe and offering. Is that to give our tithe and offering? Our tithes and offering are the, are the, the, we have various forms you can do our tithe and offering. There's mobile transfer, you can do internet transfer. There's mobile transfer, you can do internet transfer. There are mobile transfer, you can do internet transfer to our account. And our account has displayed in Guarantee Trust Bank for tithe and offering. But please make sure when you are doing, doing the transfer from bank to bank, put in direction tithes. March 2020, offering second, so, fourth Sunday, last Sunday of the month. Um, you will see, see the, the description of the C offering. Please God, when you are doing mobile money transfer, you can do mobile money transfer to all the normal display on the notice on the screen. 075 0754537. 0754537. 0754537. 0754 Those are the ETL number. For MTN number 